push them for them to do good in school, push them to be a real run and good job. And just support your kids, no matter what they do. You know, even if it's not sports, if it's whatever it is, support them. To the kids, uh, my number one message to the kids is character. You know, character. Coaches look for kids with character. You know, you have to have a good character. You know, these days you have kids, you know, that are good, they're very good players, but guarantee you, if a coach has another kid that is recruiting, who has a good high character and is not as good as you as you are, but you you know you have character issue, but you're very good, you're a superstar. They will go with that with that kid that's average, the kid that's good because they want good characters, you know. And if you're a kid, you know, at this day and age, make sure your grades are right. Make sure you're going to school. Make sure you're studying. You're not gonna be able to excel at sports. I'm, I will guarantee you. And it's one of the things that I'm preaching to our folks back home in Africa. You know is education is a very important thing mm-hmm. when it comes to the kids. It's, and I, I know tons of kids, a lot of kids in Sierra Leone who are great at soccer, and I was like, I can't get you to America because I don't even know what grade you went. You know, <laughs> I, you know, I can't. You know, yes. they see me, you know, they see me having kids come from Nigeria, you know, a couple years ago we had a kid from, um, from Congo, a 7'7 seven seven basketball player that's getting ready to go to Georgetown, but this kid is bright. You know, yes. these kids, you know, they, 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 they're going to school. So, you know, if you're in Africa and, and you, you know, you listen to here, understand it, I understand you're a good soccer player, but you have to go to school. You you have to have some kind of school because you, you're not going to be able to get a visa to come to America to play sports. Nope. You know, and if anybody's telling you, telling you different, they're lying to you. They are. Even kids, even kids that are here, you know, I witness it every day in, the, in D.C. Kids who are good football players and High school players, not you know, and I'm saying you, you just end up becoming a high school legend. Yes. Because you don't have no grades, you can't get to college. That's you right. Know, it's very strict. It's very strict. So you know, take your education just as hard as you take you know you take playing football. You know, and then you'll be fine. But always remember, you know, coaches want kids with character. You know, yeah, absolutely. So that's my, that's my, you know, that's my you know my message to them is you know have a high character. You know, be a good person, be a good kid, and you know, and then study hard and. You know, it's opportunities and I tell people, you know, I was in Sierra Leone. I never knew I was going to be in America. You know, I never thought. <laughs> Sometimes I'm sitting here and I'm wondering, like, wow, I came all the way across the ocean. You know, yes. you know who's to say that, you know, that, you know, back in Africa, I never dreamt about this. So, you know, even if you're sitting in Africa, you don't, you don't know what your life will be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Yeah, you true. know, so just, just work hard and be a good person, good, you know, go to school. And, you know, just keep pushing it. You know, live, you know, understand dreams come true. Wonderful. You know, living, living in, a, in a day and age where anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. You sure right. Look, uh, uh, mommy, uh, uh, I definitely appreciate you uh, coming on. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about, obviously, and um, uh, we 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 will definitely will catch up again. I'll get you on this program to to come on board again to in the future to talk about the, the, your, what your foundation or your your organization is doing out there in Africa. But today, basically, I just wanted you to I mean, folks to get to know who you are, what your what your profession is, and in in, in in that kind of stuff so but we'll definitely i'll definitely get you back on some other time but i want to thank you for coming on and the, the, the great words of advice that you've given out today and and, and, and i just want to say thank you again let's go thanks to you man i appreciate it you know you thing man i'm you know i'm a fan i'm a very i'm a supporter Definitely, definitely, that's for sure, absolutely, yes. Where and they when we the top of grass Right now they say don't do this, they say don't do that They say if it be me, I no go take it out Then they envy a matter or no Left to them, then go be my or no if it's the same girl, you don't advise us I know they like you, the beat you, they dance like you be stars But it be nobody business, so whether we live or whether we die, or no It be nobody business, they don't gotta know what we about, or no It be nobody business, whether we live or we die, or no It be nobody business, they don't gotta know what we about Your friend they talk it is, your friend they talk it that. Ah. 
Where them day when we the way I come last Saji Them go tell you to not do this and don't do that Yeah Forward we the go make you no look back Look up, no look back Feel them day and the armada Ladies and gentlemen, again, this is your host, Leslie Karoma with the Africa Sports Report. I, this, this week's program is, uh, I guess I'll say you dedicate that to, uh, folks who are finding niche in the sports business, uh, in the sports industry. Um, we've, uh, had a conversation with, uh, the, uh, uh, gentlemen with uh, the Cameroon Football Development uh, Program, which is uh, who is Justin Fozano. Then I've had this conversation with uh, Miss Ali Mamikale, who is uh, a, a, a trainer for the pros. And now I have a, a, a young gentleman who uh, was born and raised in uh, New Haven, Connecticut, uh, but traced his roots to Sierra Leone in uh, Guinea-Bissau, and uh, he's... Uh, what I'll call uh, an avid practitioner of the martial arts. His name is Jordan Malik, and um, I'd like to welcome Jordan to the show. Welcome, Jordan. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, um, I just indicated that uh, you are an avid practitioner of the uh, of the martial arts. Um, right. Currently, I understand you are in the mixed martial arts uh, business, but uh, you are uh basically fixated on two forms of uh martial arts out there uh when did you start when did you get your start in martial arts? what got you interested in the martial arts at a young age okay well to be honest now that i think about it i always used to tell people i started when i was a teenager when i was getting into fights at the playground and the, and the basketball courts in new haven and i wanted to defend myself but to be honest, when I really think back to it and I really research the, the true origins of martial arts, I've been doing it my whole life, yeah. um, starting since I was a kid, because many people within the black community in America, we have different forms of our own indigenous martial arts that we don't even realize. And it wasn't until linking up with some people, some professors, actually, uh, who study this anthropology of martial arts in America uh, did I realize that I've been doing martial arts since I was probably a kid, you know, okay. since like five years old, playing in the playgrounds, wrestling, doing like traditional wrestling with my friends when I didn't even realize what I was doing. We also have slap boxing, <laughs> where I'm from, people slap box. Okay. You know, so that was that was probably my introduction to actual like, I would say the sport aspect mm -hmm. or the competition aspect of combat. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the art form itself, I started when I was about 14. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, so, so you you started in uh, which which form of the martial arts did you start with? Because I, you know, like you said, uh, I indicated that you are into two particular forms. Um, but I'll let yeah. you tell I'll let you tell the audience which ones they are and uh, which one you, which one you started off with. Right. So when I was fourteen, I started off with Wing Chun Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. And for those who are into martial arts as well, they would know that's the first martial art that Bruce Lee actually started when he, when he was a young boy in, uh, in Hong Kong. And I was really into Bruce Lee and Kung Fu movies around that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I decided to actually get into martial arts, that was the first, it was no question I was going to follow, you know, in the footsteps of Bruce Lee, like a lot of people, they idolize, you know, their heroes. Right. So I did that for about a year and a half. And... I think it was really a good foundation for me, an introduction into the martial arts, because not many people know truly about Wing Chun uh, because of what they see in the movies, like Ip Man and, and the Bruce Lee movies. But Wing Chun is a very, very, very uh, internal uh, chi-based martial arts. And that's when it comes to, like, you know, not the physical side, but more so the mental and spiritual side. So okay. that was a really good introduction. Okay. All right. That, that's, that's, that's amazing because, you know, a lot of times you, you come across folks um, and uh, who talk about their introduction to the martial arts and how it helped them grow as, an in, as individuals uh, right, right. mentally and physically to help their, their self-confidence and uh, talking about the chi-based, um, which is more or less the mental side and uh, spiritual 
definitely that sounds like a, like a winner to me, obviously, because um, a lot of people do struggle with their uh, with their spiritual identity out there um, right. and their mental discipline. So I guess um, um, the martial arts, is, uh, which uh, over time has helped a lot of people, uh, it's it's an awesome go to go to form of uh, what I call exercise because at the end uh-huh. of the day it's it's a form of exercise in itself, uh-huh. but only that it has a co- a component to it that not only helps you health wise uh, for as far as exercise goes, but also to 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 develop a, a defensive mechanism to protect yourself against um, uh, somebody trying to harm you, you know, in a physical uh-huh. way. Um, and then, of course, the discipline side. When we talk about the the, the, the chi based, uh, the mental discipline, as well as the uh, spiritual connection to you to your own soul. Um, and it really offered that actually. Like that's why, I, when it comes down to it, I say that was a really good introduction because it changed my perception of martial arts. You know, I went into it thinking I was going to learn. Obviously, a lot of people go into it thinking they're going to learn how to fight. You know, or learn how to like you know build up their body. But what I got was that. And plus, what everything else you said too, right? And so that really made me, you know, look for certain things going forward uh, in the martial arts. Okay, uh, definitely yes, I agree with you on that because me, uh, me myself, uh, you know, I, uh, I've been in the in the art, uh, the, the martial arts for a very long period myself. Uh, karate, oh, yeah, Ka- Shotokan, right? Yeah, Shotokan style, uh, oh, karate. Sure. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and, and and definitely, like you say, it's it's not just about the physical. You know, uh, uh, like you say, I went in with the, the the idea to learn how to fight, but then I came out on the other end of it. Uh, learning how to be much more disciplined and much more focused and be a lot more confident about myself, you know, because that's what, that's what it did help me with. But anyway, so, so with you, you progressed on from there into, uh, you picked up other forms along the way. And, uh, can you tell us about your journey, um, and, and how, how that has gone so far and where you're at at this particular stage? Yeah, definitely. So I like how you use the word journey because it really has been one. Mm -hmm. Uh, So like I said, I started in Kung Fu, Wing Chun. And after that, I I was still young. And around that time, I was very heavily involved into sports, namely basketball, football, and swimming. So I was a really athletic uh, uh, kid. So I wanted that athletic, physical challenge from the martial arts as I was being, as I was finding more of my abilities and natural talent in the martial arts, I wanted more of a challenge. So straight from all the, you know, spiritual, you know, feel good, chi based martial art of Wing Chun, I went straight into MMA oh, wow. <laughs> at a young age. Yeah. So straight into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai. Uh, I was training at, um, at Henzo Gracie, uh, gym, uh, professional gym in, uh, in the next town over. And honestly, that only lasted for a few months. And I loved it while I was there because I finally felt like I was like, this is what Bruce Lee was talking about when he said, you know, take what's good out of every single martial art and use it to make your own. I really felt like MMA was the perfect uh, blend of everything. And I still do Mm -hmm. to a certain extent, though. Um, So from there, I only did it for a couple months. Like I said, uh, I moved down to Jamaica for the summer, which I do a lot. Uh, I spent summers in Jamaica a lot growing up. I was with my aunt, and while I was down there, still training, you know, hitting the gym. Um, but when I came back, I I decided I really wanted to get into karate mm-hmm. because I've always been a fan of uh, Japanese cartoons, anime, and stuff like that. So I always saw karate growing up, but I never actually had a good experience with it. So when I actually decided to do it, uh, I found a local gym, and this local gym was really like a a pillar mm-hmm. in the community that my father grew up in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my, not my my I grew up in that my father lived in. Mm-hmm. Uh, this community was like mainly African American, Black, and Hispanic. Mm-hmm. So this place I trained at was all Black instructors. It was a dojo of um, like American freestyle karate, which blended Taekwondo, boxing, jujitsu and Kyokushin, all into one kind of, but obviously they just called it karate. And this place actually was a dojo that um, the movie star Michael Jai White actually trained and taught at while he was in college. Okay. Many people, many people don't know that he was from Bridgeport, Connecticut. 
Okay. Which is like uh, the biggest city in Connecticut, and I'm from New Haven. Okay, all so, right. Um, 